Hi everyone, I hope the audio will be nice. I'm going to check it in a minute. Today we are going to talk about the Surface and CD parametric filters in Adobe Photoshop Beta and I'm going to talk about how you can, where you can find it and what you can do with it. And um, this video will have two parts and the second part will be about Surface and CD sampler and the AI image to material filter and how you can combine and how did I combine these two things together. So it's gonna be so fun, check this out. In today's video, we are going to talk about the Substance 3D parametric filters, which is something that I find really interesting. And um, I'm going to show you a couple of really fun filters that I use in my creative projects. So let's take a look at it. Where you can find the Photoshop beta app, you can, you can find it here if you go to the beta, beta apps in your Creative Cloud app. So you just have to click on it and here you can find all the, all the beta apps and you can just basically download it. And if you download it, you will find the brand new parametric filters. So let's check it out. Basically, you can create a new file or you can just uh, drag and drop an image. And um, for this project, I have a couple of specific images that we can use. For example, this one, I think it's really interesting. Let's just merge down everything. This is the render from Stager, Substance with Stager. Here, if you cl click on the filter tab in the, in the menu. Oh wait, am I in the right Photoshop? Yes, I am. So if you open it and here you will find the parametric filter menu and if you click on it, here you can find all the filters. You can add your own filters if you create one. What we have to know about the parametric filters is that um, they were created with Soften CD Designer and you can also create your own and upload it here. So let's check it out what you can do with these filters, for example. chromatic aberration and if you just click on another filter you will find another one. I like this one quite a lot. If you change the distance it only affects half of the image and then you can create this really really fun effect with it. Let's switch out the extras you can see better. So I think it looks really really interesting. Let, let me zoom in too. Yeah so this is how it looks. I think it's really cool. I have a couple of favorites from this, to be honest. We have the duaton. And we have this glitch effect. I'm going to create like more videos about what you can do with uh, with uh, these, uh, these images and how you can use them more creatively. We have this oil paint. I think it's really nice. Let's try another image like this one, for example. We have more colors that you can see. And now you will see that we have these really interesting brush strokes. And you can select from uh, different resolutions, so you can go high, or you can even try the ultra. And you can choose from different presets. It's really interesting. This is the sketch. And what is interesting that this is basically like a, a smart filter, so the original image is not affected and you can just change it anytime you want to tie another effect, for example, rain or hologram. And then you can just play with the play with the parameters and then you can you can I, I really like this one for some reason. So you can just create a lot of things. And um, just as an example, for example, I use this glitch effect on one of the one of my um, 3D renders, and this is the this is the result. I really like this glitch one. And uh, we have different um, different effects that you can try. I will show you an example what I uh, did with this one. We have something uh, called symmetry, and 
This is basically like a, a, a mirroring, like a list of mirroring effects that you can put on your image. And here you can choose from different presets. And some of them are really, really fun. You can play with the settings and then you will end up on different, different images at the end and results. And um, what I find really interesting is, for example, you can use this mirroring effect. You just have to find which one is the best angle. Yeah, so for example, I really like this one. And what you can do with it, what I did a lot, is that you can you can use the generative field. It is also in Photoshop better. And you can just fill this space with anything. If you don't put anything in the text box, then it will automatically just uh, generate something from the content of the image. And you will get three different resol results you can choose from. For example, I like it like this. But you can you can even go crazier, and if you select some part of parts of this um, this this render, it will generate you some something more interesting, I would say. So you can just you can you can combine these these effects, and uh, you can just experiment with them. And the results are really interesting. I will show you in a minute what uh, what the end results were for me. Let's try it a little bit differently. Let's make a bigger group. Maybe like this. Hmm. Let's see what happens. With artificial intelligence, this, uh, this generative tools, you never know what the end result is going to be. So this is always a little bit like, a, like an experiment. So now it looks like this. Hmm? It's really fun. Then you can play with the contrast a little bit and then let's see. So this is something really unique. So if you think about uh, where we started and where we ended up, it's, uh, it's really like a fun creative process. So these are some of the images that, uh, that I created with this, um, with this technique, like this one. So I think it's really, I think it's really fun. So I suggest that um, you check out the parametric, uh, parametric filters in Adobe Photoshop beta. And um, I will share more about this uh, and the, the newest filters and uh, whatnot when they will be available. So thank you for watching and just share it with me on Instagram or just put it in the comments if you try this technique and you enjoyed it. Bye bye, see you in the next one.